An attack on one of us is an attack on all of us. A show of unity from the U.S. House of Representatives today after a man shot at Republican lawmakers at a baseball field. Several people were injured, including Louisiana lawmaker and House Majority Whip Steve Scalise, along with a congressional aide, two Capitol Police officers, and a lobbyist. Congressman Scalise remains in the hospital today following surgery. The shooter, a 66-year-old man from Illinois, is dead. Today, President Donald Trump praised the heroic actions of the Capitol Police. CBS says Mola Lenghi is in Washington. In DC now with our top story. Mola. Lawmaker after lawmaker on the Hill today have praised the actions of Capitol Police, saying without them, this morning's shooting would have been much, much worse. Gunfire rang out at a congressional baseball practice in Alexandria, Virginia this morning. Five people were hit, including House Majority Whip Steve Scalise of Louisiana, who was shot in the hip. He dragged himself after he was shot. From near second base, about 10 or 15 yards into the field. Lawmakers practicing for the annual bipartisan charity game ran for cover. You hear run, he's got a gun. You don't think about it, you run. Stay down, Stay down. Congressional police returned fire, killing the shooter, identified as 66 year old James Hodgkinson of Illinois. A congressman says the gunman approached him in the parking lot and asked which political party was practicing. I responded that it was a Republican team practicing, and he proceeded to shoot Republicans. You take that for what it's worth. Investigators are still looking into the gunman's motives, but he posted anti Trump sentiments on his social media and had volunteered for Bernie Sanders' presidential campaign. I am sickened by this despicable act. Democrats were practicing on a nearby field and stopped to pray when they heard what happened. President Trump called for unity. We are strongest when we are unified. An attack on one of us is an attack on all of us. Lawmakers say the game will go on tomorrow as planned. We're not going to let incidents like this change our way of life or our daily routines. Security measures are stepped up around the Capitol in response to the shooting. Authorities say the sheriff's department was called to the shooter's home in Illinois earlier this year for firing a rifle near a neighbor's home, but no charges were ever filed. Mola Lange, Capitol Hill, back to you. Two Texas representatives, Roger Williams and Joe Barton, were on the field when the shooter opened fire. CBS 11 political reporter Jack Fink has been talking all day with members of the Texas delegation, and he joins us live in Cleburne at Congressman Williams' office. Jack? Well, Gilma, Congressman Roger Williams' office here in Cleburne has remained locked for a while now for security reasons. But after today's shooting, staff posted this sign saying, while walk-ins are still welcome, they want people to call first before they come in for a visit. Now, Williams is the Republican baseball team's coach, and he said just before that his ankle was injured while he tried to escape the shooter at that baseball field this morning. He says he'll be coming home to Texas on Friday. His aide, Zach Barth, was shot in the leg and said he will be fine. Williams spoke out about the shooting at a news conference moments ago. I give him credit. I think Zach is probably 23, 24. All the time he was bleeding and we were under fire, he was texting. He was texting, letting people know we were under fire. She bleed and uh, he was very brave. Now, the captain of the team, Congressman Joe Barton, was also there with his two sons this morning. He says the accused shooter, James Hodgkinson of Illinois, started firing from behind home plate dozens, if not hundreds, of shots. He says he and his sons quickly took cover, with one of them hiding under an SUV. And, and another son was in the batting cage. Barton credits first responders. The heroes are the police officers who who attacked the shooter um, and in doing so quite probably saved many, many lives. Now, both the Republican and the Democratic teams were practicing this morning for tomorrow's big game. That game is still on, and Congressman Williams says he is going to be going to that game. All day, members of Congress have been praising the police department and offering their prayers for Congressman Scalise. I'm going to be speaking with Congressman Pete Sessions of Dallas shortly. We'll let you know what he says coming up at 5. Live in Cleburne, Jack Fink, 
CBS 11 News. All right, Jack, we'll see you at 5. Thanks. The man police say shot at the lawmakers has several run-ins with the law. The I-team's Ginger Allen has been looking into his background. And Ginger, what can you tell us about James Hodgkinson? Well, this is just part of James Hodgkinson's criminal history that we have pulled the most recent incident. Just a little more than two months ago, when his own neighbors called the police on him for firing off 50 gunshots near their homes. Law enforcement have surrounded James Hodgkinson's home in Alexandria all day, but the I team has learned the 66 year old home inspector was no stranger to the law in Illinois, where he lived with his wife at least 11 weeks ago. Court records show on March 24th, neighbors called the police after they heard 50 gunshots fired into the pine trees. Police say Hodgkinson had a valid Illinois gun license. They left, telling him not to discharge it again in the area. I just want to let people know that he wasn't evil, that he was, I guess, tired of some of the politics that are going on. Hodgkinson's friends defended him this afternoon, saying he was simply passionate about politics. But we've learned he was also arrested in 2006 for becoming violent with his own daughter, pulling her hair and aiming a gun at her boyfriend. It's one of several closed and dismissed run ins with St. Clair, Illinois police dating back to 1989. Despite the records, protest, and social media postings that have surfaced, his friends say they never saw this coming. He was at all the parties, he was the jokester of the party. Uh, he was always happy go lucky. Uh, uh, it just took me by surprise when I saw it on the news today that. He did what he did. How did you know him? I grew up with him. I've, been, I've known him pretty well all of my life. Now you're seeing some of the pictures and the social media posts there. Speaking of his profile, James Hodgkinson was a Bernie Sanders supporter and a President Trump hater. Tonight at 5 o'clock, I'll be back as the I team digs in deeper to look at what he posted just before the tragedy and then what was posted on his sites just minutes after. I'll All right, you guys in just about an hour. We'll see you at five.